Look at my shoes over there, they've fucked us doors. Can everybody uh, see very clearly up there? Those are the focus. Oops. And uh, can you guys hear me there at the back? Loud enough? No. no. Right, no. How loud do you want me to be? <laughs> That's better. <laughs> it's got an on switch. On. Is it on? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. It's nice to have somebody in the crowd that has some humor. Um, a positive uh, sense of humor. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name is Johan, Johan Flutter, and um, I'm going to uh, spend a little bit of time with you in terms of um, capital health, and I'll be um, sharing some information with you in terms of um, production, reproduction, and then uh, immune status and what we try and achieve in the herd health program. So some of the slides I'm going to go through fairly quickly because I think it's common knowledge for a lot of you but I just want to put it all into perspective and uh, just to show you how these things tie together. So I have a couple of key, cat I call them cattle key factors. So the first one obviously is natural resources. Okay, so that's surface and food. That's 80% of um, what you need. So we need natural resources, key, feed abundance, um, we need a good normal breeding season and then I've coined a term there that I call sensitive success periods. Alright, so we'll um, browse through that a little bit and then grouping actions and of course the whole goal of this exercise is to drive to profitability. Um, this wagon wheel basically is a summary of a number of the actions that you are doing in your cow herd. Um, from day to day, month to month, and through a 12-month cycle. All right, so I'm not going to spend too much time on that. You see a lot of actions that you need to do in the herd. So in any herd, it is, all, it is a good idea to have a herd health program. All right, and this, this is a chart, an example. I think there's actually one. If you turn your head, that chart there on the back there, you're welcome to join you. Those of you still can, right? Um, when, you get, when you become older, then it becomes just muller, you know, you turn around. All right. So that's the actual size of that chart that you're seeing there on that wall. All right. And so it's empty at this stage. So with the herd health program, we start at empty. Okay. We're going to look at a couple of these um, parameters. We'll split the program, the action groups, we have months. Then we have uh, different sections in it. Vaccines, um, parasites, ectoparasites, endoparasites, certain other things like antibiotics, implants, microminerals that are applied and used in the herd. A little bit about breeding, that's not the focus for today. What I do want to point out is body condition score and conception, but also our body condition score plays a very, very important role in your herd health. All right. Then basic breeding guidelines, not too much about that. Nutrition, pasture management, I'm just mentioning those topics. And then the very last one on the right there says complete the calendar. Okay, so sensitive periods, I, I call the sensitive periods in both a bull, the male animal and the female animal in a breeding herd, when certain things can happen to them which can reduce fertility, conception, calving percentage. Alright. Because that's the time when you will get when your profitability will be determined is what happens in that breeding period. Things like temperature reaction, semen quality, and um, bull fertility, and on the cow there are the parameters for the cow as well. So the cow has sensitive periods as well. And those are the periods in the cow's um, reproduction cycle, especially when she's ovulating, when she's coming on heat conceiving, and then to keep her pregnant in that period. All right, so those are very sensitive periods because they have a direct outcome in terms of your uh, reproduction and your profitability. 
PI cars, we're not going to focus on BPD, bovine virus, diarrhea today, but it's just another um, virus, another uh, pathogen, which can have an effect on these um, sensitive uh, periods and also on the profitability of your herd. In the bull, um, the sensitive periods that I think are very important is that period of zero to eight weeks before fertility tests. So why so far back as two months before that? Those of you who do bull testing, if your veterinarian comes out there and does bull testing and then gives you a feedback and says, well, of the 20 bulls or the five bulls, um, I think these three are the five or these seven are the 20 or whatever, they're not um, fertile. The fertility is low. So is it one or two bulls? Or are there more? And certain things that we do can sometimes have an effect on that um, fertility. Sometimes temporary, other times it can be longer acting. Um, then obviously the period when the bull is um, just before it goes in, um, both of those fertility and breeding, of course your um, trike and vibrio, you know that information, very important. And then the 0 to 12 weeks during the breeding period is very important as well. Certain things you don't want to do unnecessarily in that period to have an effect on the uh, uh, semen quality. Right, so these are things that I think you need to always just keep in mind. Live virus vaccines, live blood vaccines, nutritional disturbances of course, uh, heat, pH fluctuations in animal, uh, RP51, um, more specifically in female animals, not in bulls. We don't vaccinate bulls with RP51. Did you have a question? Sorry. Um, so you don't vaccinate bulls with RP51. Not with any brucella vaccine ever, ever, ever. Okay? So that is for females, but this is just in terms of sensitive causes for both females and males. All right. Um, so the RP51, you don't want to vaccinate pregnant cows. You don't want to vaccinate too close to the breeding um, period, okay? Because you're dealing with a live bacteria vaccine, which has the potential to cause an abortion if you apply it incorrectly. So you need to consult with your local vet. Alternatively, obviously, being an MSD product, you're welcome to consult with us to guide you um, as to use it. You can use RB51, obviously, uh, in, a, in the heifers. You can start at three, four months of age, you can even vaccinate an adult cow with it, and you will not have false positive tests coming back from the lab. All right. The current brucellosis testing kits out there in the world are designed to pick up the field strains of brucellosis, and one of those strains, which is very similar to the field strains, is the S19 strain. And would you know, and if there are people here who don't know, S19, you may only apply during the first four to eight months of age. You may not give a booster thereafter, and you can't give a vaccine to a, a cow later when you're kind of scared because there's an outbreak around you. So RB51, you can give um, a booster, and you can use it two, three years later if you suddenly have an outbreak around you. But then you vaccinate the non-pregnant cows. All right, so I just wanted to focus on that. Uh, with this rain, Central Free State, Northwest, we're all sitting on edge waiting for the first case of Rift Valley fever okay, to, to come up. Because we know in the autumn, after good rains in that, in that area, that's often where Rift Valley um, pops up. But Rift Valley is much more an issue in sheep and goats, less in cattle, but it does also, it may also occur in cattle. Right? And that's a live vaccine or a dead vaccine. All right, so in terms of our um, calving ratio, we generally would like to have a 70-30 split. Okay, sort of 70% arriving in month 1, 20 plus 10 in month 2, or and month 3. It depends on your breeding season. Some producers have got a bit of a longer breeding season, and others have a shorter one. So I thought for today, I just want to show you some interesting information. If you have a bull that's servicing the herd, or bulls, and you kind of have no breeding season, the natural phenomena that will happen out there is that most of the cows will conceive in a sort of a five month uh, period, okay, when you're not applying management principles, when you're not boxing them into that. So you will generally find a five month breeding season. Um, this is just some 
literature that I took from the Northern Hemisphere just to illustrate some points here. So you'll see the number of cars born in the first month, the second, the third, the fourth, and the fifth month. And I've just changed the dates to show you because in our environment, we have cars November, December, Jan, up to March being born. Those figures at the bottom are pounds, but I've converted some just to make it a little bit practical. I'll show you now. Then the ideal, the ideal, the ideal that you try and strive for is the 365 um, goal. So that's 365. So if you want to have that um, 365 day and not have cows drift out of your calendar and then go to your cull cows, you need to be able to get those cows pregnant in 80, 82 days. Isn't it? Right. So in South Africa, it's not that easy for us always to achieve a two-month um, breeding season, 60 days plus months. Okay, so if we go 80, 82, maybe even 90, you've got an eight-day drift, and over a couple of years, that does have an effect, and you might have a cow that you cull purely because she's gone out of the season. All right, good. So with having a shorter breeding season we have um, less management issues. Now, if you think back of the first graph where I showed you, we've got five groups of calves arriving. So now, if you want to apply a herd health program, like vaccinations, or blood, or whatever you want to start with the immune system, it means you've got to manage five, you've got to manage like five age groups. So if you want to now jab a calf, say um, a vaccine, and remember, most of these diseases, even if they get them through the colostrum, they start diminishing by about month two. By month three, this immune response from the mother wanes, it disappears. So you've got to start vaccinating some things at month three, other things at month four, five, and six. So now if you've got these calves in this group, it kind of means you, if it's something, a dead vaccine, you're going to go and jab those calves in month three. In month four, you do that, but you do the ones that are now three months. And when they're done now, every month for a couple of months, you kind of, so it becomes a very, very laborious task um, to do. That's why when you try, when you shorten it, even if you go from five to three months, you can apply your herd health vaccination program much better with less hassles. All right. Okay. And we're going to discuss the rest there. It's sort of uh, pretty um, easy to understand. So in the northern hemisphere, I've just taken this graph just to show you also the effect in terms of profitability. Taken those pounds, converted them to kilograms. So if you had heard that it's calving in two over two months, um, sorry for the, the light slide, but on the left you can see them. I've just put the, the figures on the left. Mm -hmm. I'll see if it's going to fit on this underside. Thanks, if you will just um, help me there. So, in this, in this bunch, you have the firstborn calves way heavier, okay? Because they have a month more grazing by the time they are weaned, and they were weaned once. So, 254 kgs, this is 246, uh, sorry, 227, and the average is 246 kilograms average, okay? If you look at a five-month calving period, and so, if you, if you just think of that two-month, how easy is it to vaccinate those calves, to manage them? Much easier. You see, it's all, and you do it, and it's over and done. Okay. In this instance, the figures, if you look at this, the interesting thing is that the running at the heaviest is 246. Um, the lightest, 145. Those cars straggled over that season, and eventually the tail enders are loaded off. They'll go to the backgrounding, to the feedlotting, and the small cars are not, they're not putting it. They immediately go to backgrounding, and they spend another three, four, three, four months there. Trying to get that weight up from 145 up to 200, etc. All right. You see, the average weight is 218 kilograms. Good. <coughs> Thank you. All right. So, in a herd health program, just a summary. So, what we do, what are the actions we'd like to do? We'd like to vaccinate. We'd like to take care of the ectoparasites. So, the ectos, we'd like to take care of the endoparasites. Um, then others, implants, uh, certain micro minerals. Then you have your breeding and your nutrition at the end of that. That's just that wheel again, right? And the chart. So how do we tackle this chart? Does it, whether you have it on that, whether you have it on the Excel, on your phone, your laptop, whatever, you still have to kind of fill the, the boxes. 
So it's like the elephant. Eat it little by little. First of all, there's a section on the chart which allows you to enter the information for your vaccine. Second section is your dip and dose, right? And the third one are antibiotics and implants and any other actions you need to do. And then there's a section where you can put in your breathing. So what do you need for breathing? You need sheath washing, um, uh, fertility, and obviously you have to do that in time because if you leave that till the last month before breeding and the infertile or you've got trichotil vibrio on your herd or in your bulls, then you're not going to make your breeding season. You're going to run around and try and find your bulls, clean bulls again. All right. And then nutrition obviously at the bottom. If we take the vaccine, so every section in, in this herd health program is broken up. So in here you'll find there's a section for the calves and obviously for the heifers and the replacement heifers and cows and bulls. And if you take this, you run it from top to bottom, and eventually this um, empty sheet then becomes full. And so, yeah, we have a lot of products, okay? There are a lot of products that we carry. Don't, MSD doesn't have everything, but MSD, the company MSD um, has a pretty big basket of products in uh, the livestock market. And these are just some of the vaccines or ruminants. And there are three additionals. Then I'm going to spend at the end of this um, discussion, I'm going to quickly just touch on this specific vaccine called Bevilis, uh, Bevilis um, uh, Vista and uh, Once SQ. So uh, thank you for that. So Bevilis Vista, Once SQ. So the Once means it's a one vaccination. The SQ is basically subcutaneous. All right. There are other vaccines here which we'll touch on in a minute. <coughs> Okay, so I want to just go back to body condition scoring because I'm I want to take you on a short on a journey. We all know what BCA stands for, body condition score. We all do it, and we all know it's a pretty it's a subjective uh, evaluation we do, all right? But in essence, it means the lower the body condition score is, more the skinnier, all right? And for reproduction in in livestock, you want animals that are in good to very good condition. All right. Contrary to popular belief in South Africa, I honestly believe that we, we are so scared of having difficult calving that we're inclined to run our cows on the leading side. Direct correlation between that, reconception, um, conception, calving percentage. And then what I'm driving to here, if you look at that, um, the white there, is a correlation between body condition scoring, calving, IgG, which is um, serum, which is the main immunoglobulin, the main one, there are others as well, but the main one that of those that are passed through the colostrum, which the calf must consume by approximately six, eight, maximally 10 hours. Because after that period, the mother still has a lot of colostrum for a week, but the antibodies, and specifically IgG, cannot be absorbed by the gut anymore. It is broken down in the stomach, it's broken down into amino acids, and it's not absorbed as the antibody molecule. Okay. So the calf then destroys that antibody. So therefore it's important that the calf consumes that good quality colostrum in the first six to eight um, hours of life. Thereafter, that becomes good quality protein. All right, that is charm. So the interesting thing of this, with body condition scoring, is that, we go one back again. If you look at the graph, just where it says two, three, four, just divided by two, that's Northern, Amer Northern Hemisphere body condition scoring. So where it's two, it's a one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three body condition scoring. So we have cows that are on the left side that are extremely thin, that are emaciated, or even in the middle, you can see there's a difference between the IgG levels. So this, is a calf that's suckled and the next day, 24 hours later, its blood is drawn and the IgG levels are determined <coughs> to see how much of that is in the calf. And so there's a variance and that variance, and that's what the next slide basically illustrates, is that a calf from a dam that has a low score, one and a half to two, um, has 20 to 14 percent less antibodies than, than for example, a cow that, that's in a four body condition score. Doesn't sound like a lot, does it? But it means, it, it can mean, you can interpret it in whichever way. It can mean that one out of five calves didn't get an immune response. 
So I mean that one out of five calves um, had a little bit less than the others. All right. So one of the things that is very important in your herd health is body condition score, especially at the right time. And yes, if you do vaccinate a female animal in the first or the last month uh, before parturition, before calving or lambing, you will have a fairly high um, immune response. However, the trials that we've done here are basically based on cows that are just vaccinated generally throughout the year. And what this illustrates is that the most important thing is not so much in this instance the time, but the body condition score. All right. Because at, at some stage it becomes very difficult to do a lot of vaccines in that last month. You have to vaccinate the cow in that last month. So you can do your vaccinations through the year. Certain ones like salmonella and coronavirus and real, uh, um, uh, E. coli, salmonella bacteria, E. coli bacteria, rotavirus, coronavirus, those pathogens, those bugs. Um, yes, you will have some added effect if you do it like the month before. That's much more relevant in a dairy cow. In a beef herd, you don't have to um, do that. As long as you vaccinate that cow or that heifer in time and you make sure the body condition is score, she will produce sufficient antibodies, okay, high quality antibodies that can be passed through to the offspring. Okay, so we start with that empty chart and just to show you how this part works, so we just look, this section is just vaccines. And those little, um, those little green statics, those asterisks or whatever, um, that's just the age of the calf in the herd. So if you follow that star, the calf is one month old here, calf there is one month, it's two, three, four, five months. So that's the, old, the first, the oldest calves, all right? It shows you how they flow through the herd and their age by the time they're here, they're 23, 24 uh, months, of, uh, age, age of, uh, months of age and when they fall into the cow herd. So now we start populating that and what's on this chart, you won't see it in detail. Uh, you won't be able to see it very clearly, but it is the things you should do and things that are kind of recommended. You can decide some of them you don't have to do, others you must do. All right. We start populating those uh, vaccines and there are a lot of vaccines that, um, that, that we push through. So in this first one to 11, from one until 11 months, we try and do very similar to what you do if you plant uh, apple trees. If you, yes, the other day I learned the word. Yeah. Makes me feel welcome in the cell. Uh, I was driving and one of my colleagues said, Max, now that one thing, Max. So why, what is Max? And I said the macadamias. All right. So, whether you're planting Max, whether you're planting what, your maize, your grass, you have got preparation. And, and if you don't put in that, if you don't put in that attention in the young plant or the grass, what, what's the outcome going to be? Right. So therefore, we put tremendous focus into the young stock. We, we really push you, push you, push you to put a lot of focus into the young stock. It has tremendous advantages for you. Right. So that's why the first period is very busy. We put in every possible vaccine that we can and that we have. Because to say afterwards, oh, frack, I lost those three. Maybe I should have vaccinated for whatever. And I didn't. Okay. So we, we push you. The cost of those vaccines compared to the return that you get on the animal is really um, very small, the, the, the expense ratio. All right. Then we push through, so you will see that's a full program. Okay. Going from starting at three months, starting even at one month, two months, with things like polygod, eye problems. All right. Vaccines for eye problems, Moraxella bovis. All right. So starting young, going through. But you'll notice that many of the vaccines kind of start kicking in here by about three months, three, four, five, six months is a lot, and then a couple, eight and ten, eleven. And when we've gone through that, from there onwards, once a calf's gone through that introduction and booster program, thereafter is just a maintenance, all right? Because that calf goes to your replacement heifers, goes to your cows, is in your herd a long time. The other value is that when you vaccinate your calves, you do a preparation like this, the calves are healthy, the backgrounders, the feedlotters, they have their own little bait, small or big databases. They know whose cattle are what. 
And so today, you're, compete, you're competing with a guy who's not on your level. So he's competing with you who is on a higher level. Right, so that's in terms of health. Just before I move over on this one, one of the important diseases that, that we have a challenge with is still the respiratory um, sector. That means the lung health. And you can have a calf that has had pneumonia, you don't see it. And he manages it, but the minute they go through that weaning, shipping, transporting, auction, abattoir, direct, wherever, then that pneumonia kicks in. The feedlot guy then has, he vaccinates when they come in. Day one, two, three, re, re vaccinate three weeks later kind of concept. But the damage is already done. Then those are the calves that they lose. All right. They lose in two ways. They lose in death, direct mortalities, and secondly, they lose in weight growth. All right. Morbidities. And they're poor doers, and eventually they pull them at the end and they just slaughter them because they, they have to keep the system going. Right. So that's where you can play a very important role. In, in upping your health of your calves. You, first of all, for yourself, and secondarily for your client who's buying it from you. A high value product. Good. So we follow up the product. Now you'll also notice that wherever possible, we do try and uh, we do try and put things together, like here, weaning, uh, there. So wherever possible, we say, let's try and do whatever we can, as best as we can. Now you might say, oh, I'm putting a lot of needles into the cow. If you have done the preparing, the preparation of that calf at month four, five, six with your Clostridium vaccines, no? there are about 10 of these related Clostridium bugs, causing rain, uh, causing nervous systems, okay, paralysis or tetanus, Clostridium tetany and botulism, and then other Clostridiums causing the red gut, there are four or five of those, okay. Uh, and then the clostridiums that cause the, the, the gangrenes, uterus gangrene, uterine gangrene, uh, stomach gangrene, muscle gangrene, okay, just in general um, terminology. If you've done that calf, if you've prepped that calf in this period here, you start your prepping, then it's just losing its immunity, you're vaccinating it, it's just before you start weaning it, you have much less of those things happening in the cold. Yeah, with the calves were prepped there three months with a Respirovax vaccine, which is a dead virus vaccine, meaning you can give it in the breeding season, no, no problems. No resorptions, no abortions. Okay. All right, so that's an example. Good. So, parasites, we have pigs, lice, mites, flies, and maggots that we control. That's the normal daily things we do. I'm going to go through this very quickly. There's a very broad range there. You can see lots of products. Different things. All right. So even for so the next part are the parasites, and once again, calves zero to six, six plus, twelve plus cows and bulls, and then what do you position where? All right. And so you'll see the board fills up quickly, and these are products that you say, okay, this is kind of the time when you need to keep these in mind. All right. So on your board, bull fertility. You have these issues, trike vibrio, uh, fertility itself. And then nutrition, um, there are different programs. Okay, there are two, two more um, experts here today as well. So this is just an example where this specific herd, uh, calf, calf creep feed was used, okay? And it depends where you are and, and the season, the amount of rain, calf, uh, calf creep feed, and then, the thigh, and then just leaks that help growth of the female animal um, through that, because once you win, they're not your responsibility anymore. All right. Okay. So every every kilo the cow loses through, up, you know, before say in the winter or poor feed, one kilo is roughly a day. All right, on good feed. So if a cow loses a lot of um, weight, it means X number of days that she's going to fall behind, unless you really steam her up and, and do a bit of catch up. Okay. So weight loss, breeding days loss, you know. It's directly correlated. So body condition score, uh, that's very important. And this just this is just a little graph that shows, or a table that just shows the correlation between fat and and body condition score. And if you take all that into consideration, those things are all correlated. From time of calving, the heat cycle versus body condition score, days post calf. So you know that. The lower the body condition score, the longer it takes, or the lower the percentage of cows 
will come on heat after calving. Right. So at 60 days after calving, those skinny cows at 1.1 1 .1 to 2, 2.5, and even up to 3, will only get about a 46, 60 odd percent conception, uh, a heat, cows coming on heat. And that doesn't mean it's 100% conception. All right. So that's why body condition scores very important. Once the condition improves by, um, uh, say, three and a half, four and a half, between two and a half, three, three and a half, four and a half, you can see it reaches a very high optimum figure. Your number of animals that have already come on heat at 60 days, 91%. At 90 days, you practically had the whole herd been on heat once or more times. Okay. And remember from a herd health principle, the body condition score, you are putting in vaccines, it's money, you're pushing that. Body condition score is good, you're giving good quality colostrum over to your calves. Okay. So there are different tools for that. So for body condition score, I think there are four factors that I think are pretty um, important. Conception, reconception, the ICP, the intercalving period, because you saw that in the slide or two behind, uh, before. So it's giving the intercalving period extent, and when that starts happening, you start gaining to the four, five months breeding cycle. All right. Um, then colostrum transfer is very, very important in terms of that. There's some pictures. You know, this is this is subjective. So one person will think that's uh, body condition three or a, uh, uh, sorry, one you know, um, uh, um, one and a half, for example. Okay. So our figure is two, so you just divide there, our figure would be one and a half. Okay, the northern hemisphere, we, they work on double up. They go from one to nine. We go one to five body condition scoring. All right. So if you see the three there, there's the, there's the figure. One and a half, two, and where you evaluate, and it's subjective, but it gives you an idea of that cow and how she's going through her production cycle. Right. You've seen this slide. Um, you see the relevance, you see that a calf that's born from a skinny cow has much less colostrum than one that's in good condition. <coughs> um, you've seen how the effect of, so when all this then starts coming together at the end to <coughs> drive to closure, um, this vaccine was launched last year. It's a, it's a very interesting vaccine. First of all, it's a once, once use only. It contains six components in it. Contains two bacteria, four viruses, the two pasteurellosis bacteria. The one is now called Mannheimia mellitica. That is the biggest killer of cattle in the feed industry, in the feedlots, okay, and even on farms. So uh, Mannheimia mellitica, Pasteurella multicida, and then the four viruses. IBR, which is respiratory, but don't forget, it's also reproductive, no? Right, can cause resorption and abortions, early and late. And then you have, um, uh, then you have the uh, BVD, bovine virus diarrhea, PI, viral influenza, bovine flu, if you wish, and VRSV, another um, respiratory virus of cattle. So where do we position this and this? The interesting thing about this is because it contains a live virus component, IBR, and BVD, but more predominantly the IBR. The IBR potentially in all live virus vaccines, this one and any other live virus vaccine out there on the market, has the potential to cause some deaths of um, embryos, okay, egg cells in the ovary, before they even em embryo. So egg cells can be damaged in the ovary, meaning that those cows can skip a uh, cycle, for example, all right. So when we use this vaccine, when it comes into herd the first time, we say you must make sure that you're vaccinated at least 30 days or more before the breeding season. And don't vaccinate it in breeding if a cow hasn't been vaccinated with it before. So the first year is your, is your only time that you say, okay, I need to start vaccinating the cows as they calve. All right? So you take the first calvers, week one, week two, week three, or week two, whatever, <coughs> um, and you vaccinate so that you have that approximately 30 days time to allow that virus to build an immunity. Okay, so that's where you put that in. I'm almost finished with this section now. So if you want to prime them in another way, there's a vaccine there called Dispirovax, you then use that 
It's a dead vaccine. You can give it to bulls, you can give it to cows. There's no virus shedding with that. The calf that you vaccinated, infecting a cow, etc. All right. So whichever strategy you need to do, your vet could, should be knowledgeable about it. Alternatively, we're always there for, for help if you need to know um, regarding this information. Okay. So you filled in all those um, blocks, and then at the end of that, you then have your year plan. And so to conclude, um, I think as far as I'm concerned, yeah, the most important person from the MSD perspective here yeah, is, is our sales agent who services you. So I don't know if you know who the guy is. Uh -huh. Who is he? <laughs> no. Who? Where is he? Where is he? Yeah. Yeah. Eh? Rainer. Rainer yeah. Talbot. Please stand up so the people who died now you can see him. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we assume you all know Rainer, but some of you are from different areas. All right. So Rainer services the livestock clients um, from the MSD portfolio. All right. And they understand and know these things that we um, uh, transfer to the knowledge transfer. All right. So Rainer's name and telephone number, those of you who don't know it, is there to get it. Um, and then you finish off any questions. I will be available afterwards. Um, and thank you very much for the time uh, to uh, have a bit of information transferred. Thank you. Ik was vijf jaar oud toen ik mijn pa dood. 
ايه يا اخي هو شفت ما يحبوش يوم اسبوع اه ما يحبوش اوبن داخ تي شي ماي ماشي ني ديوت مين تراكس ثاني ما دزني وقت خويا او دوني فان دو ذات اي انت وش راك ني 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 هي صارت ني اخذت لا تيان انه في يوم اصلا اخذت كثير اشياء ما اني بروسيس اتاك لاين لايت وتاخر اليوم انا من ست ديال ديال en ik ben bij van ons. Het is allemaal hoe je eet je achtergrond is. Je komt ook in de achtergrond. Je hebt ook een great college, dus Andrew. En daar is je een periode. Je kan niet verloren. Je kan in een game, je kan niet verloren. Ik moest van onderaf beginnen. Ik moest van onderaf beginnen. Maar in die proces leer je mensen kennen. En je leert om mensen te lezen. En je leert een bemarking. En dat is je, je weet je dit. Jij kent elke oudste story. So, ons het baie keer een ding wat ons fout mee maak, en dit is persepties. En ek wil vraag vir jou as ek iets sê wat persepties. Perception, from a bias point of view, is the way somebody thinks and feels about you and your product. Jy wat nou, jy wat nou verkoop, sê, wat dink die koper van my af? Jy dink nie eindelijk raar dat vrek hulle behal verkoop, par het op laas is. En daar hou het een perceptie oor jou. En hy gaan langs die pad, gaan hy vannaf een perceptie op. En verskoom my dat ek een paar van my vriende nou as voorbeelde gaan gebruik, en ek kan my na die tyd kruise. Maar kom ons wat verhening. Julle weet nie wie is Henning, tot vandag toe. Julle het om op Perry Smith van ons gehoor, en kom Henning, julle het om nie gesien, na die tyd sê ons, waar is die ouwe van die bulle verkoop het, wat ek wil gehad het? Nee. En Pieter Jan het langs my gesit en gebees, wie die teen my? Ek gaan ook maar hy gaan hierdie balpad, jy kan maar terug sit, nee. Nou sit ons, nou rijd die ouds weg, dan sê dat wie sê enig te doer het. Jylle, jylle, jy, persepsie, dadelijk, jy is ouwe wat jy voorbij gaat om die bal gekoop het, jy maak jou eie goed langs die pad op. En baie versichtig wees hoe jy persepsie opstel van die man. Wat jy echt op een hening leer ken het, kom ook achter hening, boer al 50 jaar. Hening het met dees te begin boer, hy het eindelijk met baie geboer, van aanhou gewerk, en toe het hy deeste gehad, en hy moest hy deeste betaal om te poesie te koop op grond, en van die tyd af was hy een beestboer in sy kop, hy het nie met deeste geboer. Nou vind jy reis, as jy jylle nie geweet het, so in die oomlik verander jou perceptie. Van, van jy, kies jy nie, ok, maar dit was die tyd. So, sê dat, perception. You, look at the house, you are single and you want to Nee, nee, nee. Wat kan spaas doen? Jy just, jy just look at him like that, en jy sê yes or no. That's exercise, you know, you've been practicing that for years now, you know exactly what you want, and ask out to, when you see a blonde, the guy who was not looking at it, he doesn't like blondes, the other guy would immediately do twice, because that's, he's been trained in his mind. It's a psychological thing. Done some training, so if you can check out a blonde, you can also check out a buyer or a seller. The, the, people come and sell, uh, the, the, the guys that can buy your, your, your cars, winner price. He might pay you 40 rand, the next owner might pay you 40 rand, but the owner doesn't, for some reason you don't like the owner. Because you had a perception along the way. Somebody, some way along the line, you ticked you off. So I grew up in an auctioneering business. When my uncle took me around, we drove around and we got cattle for the auction. My grandfather used to have a stand at an auction. Uh, the largest auctioneers in the company, uh, country at one stage. Eh? We sold two, three thousand cows on a Friday. So we had to go market. Eh? And to this day, I can still remember those oaks that, uh, oaks that I don't like from 1972. Because eh? the oak never... He, 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 he said hi to my uncle, hello, he's, uh, he's told me hello, but here I was, sitting in it, he didn't like me, didn't talk to me. So years afterwards, I would say, that oak, he's an idiot, man, he didn't want to call, he, he didn't want to say hi to me, but he had a perception of it, right? He probably didn't have to talk to kids, or, you know, it was just too short, or just too ugly, or something, but he had a perception, man. So he had it in his mind, and, 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 and I had it in my mind, and I kept it against people for many years, so. So I want you guys to open your mind and see a couple of things. I might step on some toes today and I've got some, you know, I've got some friends that criticize me a lot like Louis. But I'll get you, I'll get you somewhere along the speech, I'll get you today. So, um, how often have you walked away from buying something 
because you just didn't feel comfortable with the oak you're dealing with, not the product. So here you go to a sale, you go walk past the oaks, okay, let, let me just rephrase. The oaks that catch, catch the, the least wind are but nowadays making the most money and getting the most money. I'll, I'll use an example. You all know Palmer Ski. Palmer is an introvert. Yeah? He doesn't go around bragging, he goes about showing. You follow him because you, you, he's not an oak that. If you had an opinion, you were, you were just as good and you were so opinionated, guys would walk away from you and say, you feel uncomfortable from somebody that's too in your face. So sometimes people that have got, mensen wat extroverte is, moet een beetje down down en start listening. That's one of the things that I want to share with you today. Okay, so you're driving up to your oak, eh? And Natal, it's really it's common, so I'll be stepping on many toes here, but just listen me up here. So this is the worst it can be. So you drive up to this oak, eh? and, 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 and I want you to compare our oak, and compare it with the place we are at at the moment. When you drove in here, you saw, yeah, the grass is cut. It's always cut like that, right? Eh? It's always cut like, it always looks like it's, it's, a, it's a management principle here. It's with neat here. See, the men are working with top class proper. So now you're going to buy a bull. You drive past the oak scrapyard. You've got a friend there in Stanford and he's got four hectares of scrapyard on the way to his house. <laughs> so by the time you get to the house, you already know, yeah, you know, he's not heavy on, into cleanliness and neatness and all that. Eh? So that makes you perceive this oak's not a oak. He might just not, he might just be a order, secret order or something, but. He might have other attributes that are great. Might be a great cattleman, which most of you, uh, all of you, in case it and uh, oaks are great cattlemen, but you're not good with with First contact you make. Uh, they phone you. They want to buy a bull. Uh, it's like a first date. I see it. It's like it's like a first date. The dog phones you, say, oh, I get to wear it, but I don't have to Yeah, yeah, man. Then you start sizing the oak up, up. You say, where are you from? No, I'm from Middle Mark. No, I've got a cousin there. Do you know him? You start talking. Yeah? Where did you hear from? from? No, that's from this oak. Okay, then, that, that's your first, that's your first connection. Eh? So, so, in that two minutes that he's talking to you, he's going to spin up, make up your mind. So if you're bombastic or in a hurry or something, he's going to put the phone down and he's not going to come to you. So, he's a bit open, fra fra, be inviting, because he's, he's found you out of all the others. So, first contact. Right, now it drives up to you. The moment it comes into your, uh, uh, to your, to your farm, you either have a, like the very best place that owns it, it's a good and I'm getting at you. Good signs, man. I'm thinking, yep, here you are, it's a great word. Look, check this out. That's the deal of the shop. This is Robert. This is me. This is me, but it's a care of black, yeah? This is me, Rechter. So, the perception you get from that entrance, this is the, 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 and the, 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 you are all farmers, you're all managers on your own farm. So you drive around looking for faults. I, I, I saw a uh, hen and, and I really laughed in my mind the other day. I used to work for Manus Ace, and some of you also remember it. You used to drive around and look for faults all day long. And, and, and I think uh, 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 your, your staff is particularly frustrated, but that's what we do. We all drive around, hey, pick that, pick that, pick that. That's your, that's your job. Now you come to another oak farm and you see the fence and you don't see any droppers as nice as pie. You know, three kilos. By my three kilos, it's three kilos to fair, but the oak is a hell's up 10 minutes on a perception for me to unbuckle. Eh? So, now I'm going to come here by the plaza, the grass is nice as nice, the honor proof play of the grass, and you come out and you're going to honor this for a bulb at all. Darling, see, you're proof, you're clump track. We're going to get the bulb up in the mensen to tie it by. It's a perception. Now you get out, devil, 
Jy wil dat die ugliest drops. Kijk, jy is a true friend of mine, the best of the best. Best uh, cattleman I know, he's knowledgeable, but hell, he's got a ugly dog. <laughs> now, kom jy met die een bian die af. The marketing, not good, eh? But he, luckily, he doesn't sell stuff off his farm. He just goes and consults you guys, so he doesn't take it off. But to this day, Llewellyn will not forget him. One day his wife went long, and he's got this ugly black dog, man. That dog... Got no purpose in life. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he walks around with this little dog, his wife went to the toilet, and all the oaks perception of him dropped there at the moment. They said, No, this is no. Luckily, the, the, the Eastern Cape oaks are more forgiving. <laughs> <laughs> and then the, the, the actual mutter, now, those get you an arm, a drakkie oe your hand, now, the two firm, a drakkie you. He might be the best breeder in the world, but he's got a problem with his uh, <coughs> muscles. But, but, but you, are, you are thinking, no man, then you get a girl, one of the girls in, in, in Ons Kantoor, I don't know if it's Marie, um, you said the other day, where's the girl with the firm handshake? Huh? He remembers a handshake. So this is all thing going through your brain, processing. What you are, uh, you're not even there by the bulls. We are not even at the crawl yet. And you've already made up your mind. 80% of what you're going to think. Okay. So. Okay, this is just. Uh, this is the first print. This is the new print. You can see it. 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 Okay. Yeah. Oh no. Like I always to my wife, hey, dress up. As he and your on. Meet your wife. This is my wife. <laughs> and, and already he said, yeah, you got a queer smoke, he must breed good bulls, eh? We <laughs> 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 got that impression, he knows I'm breeding good bulls, because he, he says yeah, my yeah. wife the prettiest in the bank. So then you get three personalities, you get the I'm okay, uh, you're okay. Most of us are, are that personality, we've got that I'm okay. Then, I'm so, then, then, then you get out that bit of a um, introvert, and, uh, and you're by my son, I say, I'm okay. Uh, I don't know. This 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 is enter this daddy. I'm okay. You're not okay. You, you, this is a bit the 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 great one that they care about. A bit the duck neck around, man. And this is for what was bad. He's actually bad on my class, but you okay. Yeah. Come here with your trailer on. But you okay, so you you don't think I'm an idiot. I come from that kind of poor. As I ask you, come on. Say, but you can't buy from here. It's an old guy. Why are you not going to do something like this? Marketing or street? You are a farmer, but you are not okay. You are not okay. I'll do it my way. Leave me alone. Eh? But now, unfortunately, you have to sell your board. So you've got to listen up. And then, you are not okay. I'm not okay. So it's a bit of a complex. It's a bit of a complex. But it's a bit of a complex. But it's a bit of a complex. But you are not going to do it. Okay. In the meantime, the buyer wants the following from you. He, he wants to see integrity. He wants to hear it. Probably heard from a friend of him. No, go, go buy from you on place. He's a lacquer out. You can on trust. Nah, trust him. It's a buddy of mine. Nah. Any friend of your is a friend of mine. Or what they call it? I'm fat in the house. Nah. Oh, you, you, you had a reference. So they want integrity. And the other thing that was offered here, you don't need moisture, but nah. Maar daar is altijd een kat met een dikke ster daar bij te zien. So, die ouwe bij jou bol kom koop, wil ook kyk na jou. Hy gaan kyk, hoe doen jy jou dinge, waar kom jy vandaan, wat sy principles het jy, wat sy, hoe dek sy soen, ne? en na rik jy, en vir jou sê, ek like wat ek sien, ek wil nou my bol koop. Maar ek het al soveel ouwe gesien, met die mooiste, mooiste bille, met die ingevoerde embryo, maar hy het die great mind, ne? hy voer ons embryo's in, ne? die mooiste bol. Maar die ouwens glo nie in sy concept nie. Ja. Want feit, dan gaan jou product, uh, gaan jou product baie koop wat sy sy kudde komplementeer. Ja of nie? En die 
Why I want you to listen what, what he's going to say. Now, I've got to say, man, this is one of the journal that is in the American journal. That's why I also have been talking about marketing. He said, What do you owe for coffee? Let's look at the bottom of the slide. Coffee and cookies. Ah, the coffee and cookies rule. What do you owe? Bring them in. Give them coffee and tea. You get back here. But in the meantime, it gives you a chance to find out what that is worth. En en nou is dit deel wat wat consulteer, sê vir my, die meeste van die tyd gee die ou vir jou die probleem en twee sinne verder gee jou vir jou die antwoord. You just need to hear it from you. So, while you sit there and drink coffee and cookie, he's going to give you information. I had a chap one from Ben Transvaal, and he came to buy a bowl, he said to me, while we were eating cookies, now I could have made a big mistake and lost the whole deal if I hadn't listened to him. Do you remember those embryos we had in the 90s, what we got from America? One of them was an ugly bull that we had to sell. So this oak came, came and have a look at them. Remember those embryos that we brought in? So anyway, so this oak wanted to buy that embryo bull. But he was ugly as hell. But, and he had bad milk figures and all. And I didn't want to show him to this oak. But the oak sat down and he said to me, you know, I've got a big problem. I've got too much milk in my herd. The cows, man, oh, with three months old cows, they've got big udders like that. that the milk pump I tell you, what mark I must I must I must I must swap milk savers. I said, well, that's just the right book for you. <laughs> but if I hadn't listened, I would have missed all this because I wanted I want to talk, you know. But you have to the cookies and coffee always do it because he's going to tell you about it. Okay, how come I over the bank to you on? And they draw and they draw on my way back. Why are you yellow? Why are you flat? Why are you yellow? Hy het sy als draai ou om, hy het een wandje, hy kom daar aan en hy rui, en jy dan, tjap, as hy nog wil rehaal, hy moet nie op hol toe. Nee, sal het nie kunnen, jou product is daar te duur, jou product is nie goed genoeg nie, dan het jy die koopraad gesit, dit kom die perceptie. En ek het nou hier nog een boek geluister van, van oor listening, nee, hulle sê, 73% van sales, don't happen because not of the product, not because of the product or the price. It's something else that sets the oak off. So now go, try it on on your file and you ride back. What not yet? Just must have to get 100% sales high. But die 200% owners, it's only the owners that are coming and from there and from there later on. But when I was looking, it's not that I was. I couldn't hear a thing for a bob or something. Money is there a thing for them to look for all of it. Yes. Maar nou nie van sê jou wees van, maar nou nie sê net ek het iets in jou prijs van. Of follow up. Ok, so fix it. Dit is die ander ding wat ons nie doen nie. Ons is happy, ons is ons geld te kry, geld in die bank, maar ons is ou wat wegloop en hy is nie happy. So fix it. Dit is iets wat ek achtergelaat het, wat ek vraag wil oor. Iets wat ek julle ook wil sê, baie keer mis ons dit ding omdat ons nie die selde kultuur is as iemand. In kultuur praat ek van KZN kultuur. Die prijsstatus praat altyd van, ja, jy loos in die oorste, en die oorste sê, ja, prijsstatus. Dit is rarig as dit, as een ander stuk kultuur. Hier in Natal werk jy met groot getalle, met een ander breeding system as hulle, hulle soek individuele, en hulle soek top kwaliteit. Ons soek een mooi average herd. Die average ou in die best vrystaat het een hoekie op, wat so gebuid is, en hy het lekker boerboelbroekie, jy sien sy tyd boutjes, lekker prik. Die natale ons is allemaal anti-heroes, ek noem hulle anti-heroes, dit wat die is krikkedat, so gekrikkel, en hulle kyk wie kan die slechtste lyk, ek beloof jy, en hulle kyk wie die duikje aan, en nou die dag die sê, en in die asel bakkie wat hulle so gekry het op die plaas, en so staan, nou sê, staan, staan, ek wil vir ons sê, al die bakkie het sien dat alles kom, alle gaan dit moes aan, lekker bakkie daar, dit is die, wat hulle die tenier en die tenier aan dit, dit is die, dit is die natalese manier daar, nou kom na ou van Westvrystaat aan, waar daar staan, Robert Juan, he, achter wat jy, Alles is 
So, as I Robert see that we are come and I come out of the cruise, what do you for me? Be it. Say, yeah. It's in nothing to be it. You understand? Or pray for two minutes with Thomas. Say, be it. And then pray for him. Then he gives you respect. But you must understand what he comes. It's also, I do not in a left line. But you must ask him for him. See, the other comes and comes. Not your crinkle who Danny be straight up. You must crinkle your own. Good. Okay. Then create. Als ek net so'n bietjie, bietjie nog een ding wat ek wil sê. Ek krijg hier baie keer saak, en ons denk hier baie keer een sakeman wat een boerderij begin. Die sakeman het doen net alles vir ek wil. Hy sal binnen 5 minuutje vir jou sê, my naam is Poos, ek het een constructiemaatskapie in Jobe. Onthou nou, hy blij in Jobe. Hy sien nou daar na kant en hy verkoop jy so nou maar. Hy het 3 minuutje om sy presentation te doen. Want hy ons daar wil, my vernoot, sy general manager, sê, hy gaan nie kontrakte bespreek met nieuwe kliente, met sy soos en bak nie. Hy is maar die baas en my. Sê, hoe kom? Sê, nie, hy werk aans ter in die stad. Hy ons, wil die prentje binnen 5 minuutje sê. Jy wil ons, wil jy ons nie prentje binnen, hulle wil jou boerderij sien, hulle wil weet wat jy doen. Hulle wil jou, hulle wil jou, jy maak, my vernoot, ons kom hier al op die plaas, ons kom sê, tel ek en sê, vir hoeveel beest het ons. Ons sê, kijk, hy werk nie so nie. In die boerderij gemeenskap, is een windgaat die ouwe wat vertel hoeveel beeste het, want hy lieg nog die helfte van die bui op. So jy vraag nie vir ouwe hoeveel beeste het hy op skaap nie, of geld in die bank nie. Jy sal het sien, jy sal jou eie mind op maak. So, daar is die kultuurverskille, ne? Ons kyk. En die wat is... My groot vraag vandag is, kan jy maak Kan jy maak dat jou ego een deel rineer? Kan jy rarig, kan jy probeer vir die ouwe wat jy die ouwe nie dik sterk, of jy rarig is al verkoop in een vrou dan bouw? En daar ook wat by jou koop, hy het een paar vereistes. He wants to do a few things. He wants you, he wants to become he wants to become part of the family. As jy een groot boer is, wil hy sê, wil jy echt wil by John Burke is bij. Sê jy vir John Burke. Echt super en by. Hy wil deel word van die familie. So betrek hom, keep him in form. So every now and then, he must, by guy that bought the ball, he doesn't want you to phone the next day before the sale. Hey, poes, ek het jou gemis laas jaar, man, waar, hoe gaan hy met jou en, dis vals, ouwe. Tel die ouwe paar keer dier die jaar, van kei ouwe, Arthur de Villiers een paar, ouwe om Arthur, hy het deel wat ons hy het, hy het kan sal doen. He says that the main trick in their business is, and was oom Arthur driving around all year long, going to visit his house. He could do it, because he sold 150 bills there. And what did Klein Arthur do? He's not happening anymore. He's not communicating with us. So ouds aren't part, being part of the business. They're not buying in anymore. So he moet daar wees. And the other thing wat ek graag, wil hy, jy moet onthou, is jy moet nut jou die relation. Invest time, follow up last sale, deliver trust, be consistent. Dis al wat jy nodig is om my bol te verkoop. Moe nie een, elke jaar. Volgende jaar kom jy ons aangeloop na jou. Maar moe nie wind gaat raak nie. Keep on doing that. But for the moment you stop being yourself, helping other ouds, The moment you think you are better, when you get fit, you become arrogant. I say you, this is a problem. As you're 50, you're blind, and you're not going to do what you want. You say what you want. You don't need to do it. You're not going to let your friends go. The great thing in the real business is to give you a promise and to give you a promise. Thank you.
thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you for the opportunity. My name is Sietje de Vissi. I'm the area manager for Frugal Feeds in the Eastern Region. I live in Howick. Uh, but I originate, I'll, I grew up with John Burgess, um, my, my brother is his neighbor there in Frugley. So, uh, um, yeah, it's a privilege to be here. It's a beautiful setting, and uh, it's so nice to chat with, with you guys under these circumstances. Uh, we've, we've probably had one of the best seasons in a long time. The capital is looking phenomenally, but I've seen. And, uh, um, you know, with the season that we're having, it's, it's, a, it's an ideal time to chat a bit about where we are, what we're doing, and how we're going to go ahead for the next few, few months, and what we're going to do. So I'm just going to talk to you about, um, Angus said the day is to be a talak, so the slides are on Afrikaans, I'll chat in English. If, if there's anybody who doesn't understand anything, please just ask a question and interrupt me at any time. So, um, I'm so glad that Dr. Johan and, and Peter spoke before me, because they touched on a lot of things that I'm going to, I'm going to talk about. Um, uh, Peter, especially, you know, we are in the business of relationship building. We don't sell it. We do what we do because we want to add value, maximum value to what we do on the farm. If I just want to sell it, you know, you go and buy from the opposition. We're there to really add value. If you want to save money, that's not what we do. We're there to make money for you. Utilize what you have on the farm to its best capacity, to the most making the most of it. That's in essence what we do. So um, <clears throat> we build relationships and, and it was interesting listening to Peter's talk because that's what it's all about. That's what, what we're all in business of. We want to build relationships with people so they come back and buy our balls and come back and do business with us again in the year after the year after the year. So I was listening to, a, to a, a, I think it's an Indian uh, uh, yogi, uh, Gopalal, his surname, I'm not sure, I can't remember what his name was. And uh, there's also a study about from Harvard University, which is the oldest study about happiness in the world. You can go and Google it. It's, it's been started in the early 1900s, and, and they've got collectively over 700 years of data which they collected. And the only thing <coughs> that makes people truly happy is the strength of the relationships that they have with other people. Money and all the other stuff comes a little, a far, far down the line. The, the thing that all, only, the only thing that makes us really happy is the strength of the relationships. So, Peter, thank you for don't give you a project. So, just to start off, we're just going to look at the bigger picture. But um, as far as um, uh, animal feeds are concerned, so annually a cow of 450 kgs consumes about 3.65 tons a year of, of, of feed a year. Of that, about 140 kgs comes in the form of supplements and eggs. Where your winter lag is the, the most, 125 kilograms, and your minerals and trace minerals, which is your phosphates and all that stuff, about 15 kgs. There's only 3.4 3 to 4.4% of your total uh, feed intake here comes from your supplements and your eggs. Okay, the biggest asset that we have on the farm, obviously, is the grazing that we have, the natural grazing. And we want to utilize that to the maximum capacity. We need to make as much out of that as we can. Um, and that's why we advocate a season's rest as, as much as we can. Why do we advocate the season's rest? First of all, it's to help the plant seed itself better, to help the plant develop better, to have spare uh, grazing in winter time, also to help with the reserves of the, the plant. I don't know if you've seen that slide um, that Hendrik from Petschen used to have where they did a cut in the, in the grass to show you the different grasses that's been grazed and, sat and, and rested over years and how much, uh, how much, how big a difference it makes to the root capacity of the grass if it's been rested for a year. Okay, this is just a table to show you what the effect is of a, a a resting season. Now, when I say a resting season, it means resting your grazing from October until middle of April for the whole growing season. Okay, so this is just a slide to show you what the, what the effect of that is. And if you look there at, at, at um, Roy Cross, um, the, if you after a resting season, the kilograms per hectare it produces compared to when you've grazed that, that same cow. Okay, this, uh, we also, we always talk about developing the natural resources of our, of our grass. And this is just an interesting 
probably the slides are a bit hard to go in, two slides, that hectare was has been camped off and hasn't been grazed or burnt for 38 years. That was at Moitkadok uh, um, farm in near Ermelo. And that's what eventually happens to the grass if we don't look after it. Okay. Um, when we talk about managing or looking or thinking about what lick we're going to give, when we're going to leave it, and, and the management we're going to look at there, there's certain aspects we're going to take into account. Okay? Your, although your intake of lick only makes up 3.4 to 4.4% of your total feed intake, it makes up about 30% of your total cost. So it's worth looking at it, planning it, and making sure you're giving the right lick at the right time with it, when the cow is in the, in, the, in the correct production cycle. <coughs> <coughs> okay, we want to, with leaks, we want to make sure, like I said, that we target that specific production cycle at the right time of the year with a correct leak. Um, Dr. Yuan mentioned about the um, having a, 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 a breeding season and shortening that breeding season. And that's specifically to talk about focusing your attention and the finances you have in a specific time to make sure you, you, you meet the specific need of the cow in that time. <coughs> Okay, in, uh, when we talk about a lick, we, you know, whether it's a winter lick or a summer lick or a production lick or a mineral lick, we make sure that the nutrient ingredient in that lick is correctly formulated to meet the, 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 um, the need that you have at a specific time. Okay, we always sometimes look at the, of the genetic value of our animals. We go and buy an expensive bull, we've got a best genetic potential but we don't we don't fully develop that potential because we don't look after his nutritional needs okay a, a, a top producing cow is a cow that can calf every year and that can wean a, 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 a calf for more than 50 percent of our own body weight every year Okay, how much lick does an animal need? That depends on the time of the year, the production cycle, say, the season, um, whether you have a short breeding season or a long breeding season. Uh, um, you know, how it depends from breed to breed. So it's all things we need to take into account when we plan for the year ahead. The next thing I I'd like to focus on is, is trace minerals. Um, and specifically in the time that we are now in the summer season, trace minerals is or mineral um, is the is the, the the aspect which we need to focus on when we're talking about summer supplementation and late summer supplementation. Now these this is not a it's it's, it's a very intricate um, uh, way in which these trace minerals interact with each other. So it's not always about having too much of one or too less of the other one, but they interact with each other. So, for instance, too high levels of calcium in your water would, would, in, uh, would inhibit the uptake of selenium and zinc, uh, which is crucial to your reproduction cycle. So the next slide shows that how these interactions work um, between the absorption from trace minerals. As I said, calcium has an effect on zinc and copper. Um, sulfur has an effect on, on the intake of selenium and copper. So um, when, when we look at these things, it's crucial that we make sure we know what the status in our farms are. And for that, you'll have to get your vet and your medicine company involved. And then we top it up in the right time with a correct supplementation. <clears throat> I've already touched on that and the, the, um, influence, the influence that sulfur would have on the, the, the absorption of other trace minerals. Okay, do we use a self-mixing lick or do we buy a ready-mix lick? And that's, that's all things that you need to take into account when you do your planning with your, for the year ahead. You have to look at the costs involved, you look, have to look at your infrastructure, whether you have the correct mixes or not, the raw materials that you've got, whether you have control to make sure that the mixing, uh, the mixing is done correctly. And then also something which we all lose out of sight sometimes is the, the cost involved of milling, maize, and mixing the mixing the feed. Okay, at the at the moment we're in the late summer. We've got another month and a half, two months left before the first frost. Some areas are a little bit earlier than others, and we want to we want to try and focus at this stage 
to make sure that we carry the good condition that we have at the moment as far into the winter as possible. Okay, most of your cows will be hopefully be pregnant by now, the bulls will have just come out, all this just coming out, and you want to keep that condition that they have for as long as possible into the winter. Not only is it cost effective, but it'll save you money in the winter, because that's when you're expensive to, to get a cow from a low body condition scoring, with what Dr. Yvonne talked about earlier, to where she's got a calf, is going to cost you a lot more money if you don't do your, your homework at the moment. So, if we focus a little bit on that at the moment, because that's the season we're in, we've got a phenomenal uh, uh, season this year, the climate is, is fantastic, the kennels are looking exceptional. So, we want to try and, with the current conditions and the high prices, we're all in for a good season and a good year. We want to try and focus to use the grass that we have for as long as possible. Okay, the critical aspects that we're going to look at at the moment is, is supplementing our trace minerals and our minerals, phosphates and all the trace minerals, zinc, selenium, copper, uh, iodine, um, manganese, which are all crucial for reproduction later in the year. And in football, and the reason we, why we do this at the moment is not only more cost effective, but the reaction of your, your animal is so much better than trying to rectify that later in, in the winter time. And the reason for that is the quality of the grass that you have at the moment. It's like having your vodka with a Red Bull and not with a Coke or water. Okay. So the two products that we are going to focus on at the moment is our phosphate block and super mono. The reason I put phosphate block on there is, um, you might know as we do, that there's a shortage of phos phosphorus acid at the moment. So we're all struggling to get P6 and P12 at the moment. And um, we feel that phosphate block is actually a better product, which I'll explain to you now. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that. And then I'm going to talk about probably one of, one of our best products available, Supermore, which, which you have to give to your higher producing animals. So if you look at phosphate block firstly, that's the composition. And I want to focus your attention on the uh, trace mineral side there and the high levels of that. Um, uh, now, phosphate block, um, for us, because of the high trace mineral uh, uh, values and they have, is a far better uh, you know, option than just giving plain P6 or P12 and salt to animals. And the reason for that, first of all, is the intakes are better because it's molasses based. It's a little bit grain resistant. And uh, as far as costs are concerned, it only works out between 25 and 30 rands per cow over your whole summer season. Now, if you, con if you convert that to you know, the days you spent um, when you can put P12 and P6 out because of the rain or the losses you have or the lower mineral intakes that you, that you get there, I think phosphate block is a much better option. The second one is, is what we call the, the Superman of Kumal Lex, the Supermall. Um, that's the composition of Supermall as we know it. Um, the intakes are between 1 kg and 1.2 kg per day for, a, for an animal, for a cow. And once again, if you look at the, the trace minerals and the mineral um, composition of it, it's, 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 it's excellent. And these are the use, uses of, of Supermall as we know it. Okay, it's animals with a high production um, uh, or a high uh, uh, um, nutritional uh, need to grow out your lighter winter calves on good quality green grazing. Okay, it can be used as a, as a uh, um, what's the it? Flush, a flush feed to increase your um, calving percentages. <coughs> Okay, it can be used on young bulls on extensive phase D testing. Um, it can be used on your cows or calves that are, might not be in the, excellent, the great condition. You want to clean them up a bit before winter on green grazing. And then it can be used to, to fatten weaner calves on green grazing if you mix it half and half with maize. Okay, there's a few other um, uses which, we, which we, I want to bring under your attention to um, fatten up old cows, the silage. When the bulls have, are coming out from the cows at the end of the breeding season, until the end of March, which is the time we are now, to get them back into condition. 
Okay, you can use it with standing hay like sugar grace. And you can also use it on young dairy heifers, six to seven months old, on green grazing. Okay, when we talk about winter supplementation, I'm going ahead in the, uh, the, the we're looking at April, May. Okay, protein is obviously the, 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 the aspect which we go supplement during winter time. We're going to have the correct lick to, to stimulate the cow to eat more grass. We don't want animals to lay by the by the uh, troughs and wait for the leg to come. Okay, so that's why we've got to watch out for too much maize or too much uh, um, roughage in a, in a, in a, in a, in a leg. Okay, and we've got to, let's just go back one, and we got to manage the intake of the animal. Okay, and it's a question we get a lot, a lot in the field is, you know, how you put out your legs. Most farmers that I know put out three times a week and calculates how much each cow is going to get per day and puts out that amount every two days. Um, and if they eat everything on the first day, that's fine. At least everybody had a chance to eat or to get at the trough. Um, so, but manage those intakes, because especially in our sour field areas, those intakes can run away some days. And we want to, want to make sure they get the correct intake. Okay. Choose the most cost effective supplement for your area. Get the agent of the company that you're dealing with onto the farm to come and have a look at your setup. What you have, what you can use as a raw material, whether you need a concentrate or a ready mix lick, whether you have sour felt or more sweet felt, um, whether you need a concentrate, if you're gonna use your own maize or your own um, soy oil cake or whatever. So use the, the, the knowledge and the, the um, company that you deal with, use their people, it's for free, the advice is free, you don't have to use it. Okay, at, at Kurmoor we've got a wide range of uh, winter licks to suit almost every production environment in the country. We've got blocks, we've got concentrates, we've got uh, premix 450 which is our main winter lick, we've got a conelec for your sweeter felt areas, we've got boerfelder lek and boerfelder lek concentrate. For the very south field areas up the up the hill here, Harry Smith, Freda, Niem, all those areas. So contact your food more rep. Let him come into the on to your farm. Have a look at what you have and what your uh, specific needs is, and planning ahead for the year to come. Okay, I said in the beginning that that we we're not in the business of saving you money. We're in the business of making you money. We want to build a relationship with you. We want to do business with you year after year after year. And to do that, we got to really want to make sure we make you, give you the best possible advice. So please use us, get the guys onto your farms, make sure they come and have a look at your, your animals and what you have in the farm, and uh, um, um, do the correct planning for the winter and for the little bit of the summer that's still available to us. Thank you very much. Any questions? <laughs> I was very lucky to go to the UK and I married an English wife. And I taught her some Afrikaans. And then at some stage in our relationship, when she said no, 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 I just had to make sure what she meant at that stage. <laughs> Uh, on behalf of the KZN Club, uh, our chairman, King Louis, uh, who speaks very well uh, after brandy and coke, uh, he said that he won't be having brandy and coke before the day, so he asked me, or instructed me rather, but he doesn't ask, he instructs. He said, you do the talking and you do the things. Um, I was going to give it an Afrikaans, but uh, it'll take too long. But on behalf of the KZN Club, I'd like to thank, uh, uh, first of all, our three speakers, uh, Dr. Jan Kluter, uh, Peter Swart, Seti Dukasi, um, for the very insightful uh, knowledge that they have shared with us, and also in advance to Diabot Post, who's going to talk to us uh, amongst the cattle and give us a lot of uh, knowledge, etc. And I'd like to thank, say a big thank you to all of you who have taken the time out of your busy schedules on your farms on the weekend to come and visit us. Kursi, Danki Dat Jesu, Ferger Rayet, Ontvar Gerrit, the guys from the Eastern Cape, from Pumalanga, 
um, Andrew Roberts, I think, who's been here in Moore River more often than he's um, been in other provinces, so we're considering uh, changing his number plate. To all the sponsors who have, uh, who have been involved in this day, thank you very much. Please give them your support, some of the guys. I think uh, Asuzu guys uh, from Motus, Asuzu and Asando, they've come, they brought the Bucky and the lorry all the way down from Joburg. Uh, so give them your support. They've got some jackets as, uh, as lucky handouts later on, so go and give them your support. Masco guys, go and see all the stores that are here. Um, but a big thank you also, uh, especially to, to Henning, to you and your team here at uh, Summer Hill Equestrian. Uh, your, your passion and pride for what you do um, stands out here today. Um, Armand, to you and the team, uh, to the ladies from the School of Excellence, the students, to the whole Summer Hill Equestrian team. Summer Hill brings as well. Um, it's really, it's, we, we, we're very grateful that you chose a farm here in KZN and joined this club because we, we need the assistance to um, take over the rest of the country. So, thank you. <laughs> so, let's give a big round of applause to the club. We're shortly going to get on the, the big John Deere with the trailer and the bales and we're going to go up and look at the bulls and some females. Uh, some bovine females, and then we'll uh, listen to Gearbox, then we'll come back and have lunch. But uh, enjoy the rest of the day, and on behalf of KD Brains, once again, thank you very much. Guys, just a moment uh, before we go. I could uh, just a moment to answer. For all of you, you said I have a track on you, KZN, for him to say, for my doya lacha. No, I want it. Yeah, I say it was the correct. Ek wil net seker maak, jylle sien, ek gee vir my MP, as jylle by ons kou of een peiling kom en hy draal nie die MP. Dan koop jy nie, nooit weer een bal. Kom my. Die nommerplaat van verander binnenkom. Ek sien jylle daar buiten.